Hey guys, it's Carl, and welcome back to another iPhone video. You can see we've got the 13 mini in front of me. We also took a look at the 13, 13 Pro. I will leave vids linked in and around this way. I just wanted to make this video super short because a lot of you on Twitter were saying I was one of the only people that got a product red iPhone, and I know that they've changed the color this year around. If you recall from last year, it was a bit more salmony, and unfortunately, I just sent that one back to Apple so they could actually switch it for the new 13 line. So we'll quickly take a look and see what the product red looks like, what, of course, the iPhone mini looks like, and I do have my last-gen iPhone mini, iPhone mini 12, right here, just as a little size comparison to kind of see what has really changed. So quickly, let's get into the box. You can see it's still that very thin box design. Unfortunately, we still have no charger inside and of course the product red up top and the 13 line The colors that you can grab are of course product red starlight midnight blue as well as pink So I currently think the product red and the blue are my two favorite color options. I'll quickly take my standard iPhone 13 over just so you can kind of see what the blue looks like. It's a bit more muted than last year, but I think these two will be very popular options. Obviously, Midnight is very dark blue, almost close to black, but uh, if you are looking for a bit of color in your life, I think you might lean towards this one. So quickly out of the box, you can kind of quickly see the product red. We'll put that off to the side. And we of course have designed by Apple in California or designed by California in Apple if you're new here to the channel and a USB-C to lightning cable, user manuals and warranty info and you get this nice little product red badging. So of course that means Apple is donating a portion of the sales from this to the fight against HIV and AIDS. So that's always nice. And you do just get the standard white Apple sticker. It's always nice to see companies donating and the fact that this costs the same as a standard iPhone 13, 13 mini, whichever model you decide, it really is no sweat off your back to get this product red and a portion of that will be donated. So I always say if you're not really too particular about the colorway, get the product red and you can help donate towards a good cause in my opinion. So here is the 13 mini and we've already got a couple of fingerprints on the back, but you can see how deep the red is this year. It is so much better than last year's product red. It actually can get that red label. It almost looks like a cherry red. This year round, it's just really, really nice. Nice and deep and saturated. And I think this should be the product red color kind of moving forward. And because it's the iPhone 13 line, we have the aluminum banding around the outside. So you can see once again, it's still in that nice anodized aluminum in red. And if I quickly take my iPhone 12 mini, you can kind of see the size comparison. It is pretty much identical. I don't see an actual size difference, but one of the best features I think coming to the mini on the 13 line is actually the battery is being improved. So I know that was the number one feature people hated about the 12 mini. The battery life was just terrible. It wouldn't last the entire day. We'll have to wait for iFixit to do a full teardown to see the exact milliamp hour. But as a reference on the iPhone 13, I believe, don't quote me on this, I need to double check my numbers. You get an extra hour, hour and a half. And if you look at say the iPhone 12 Pro Max to the 13 Pro Max, you're looking at two and a half hours of extra usage. So I think that's a huge deal because everyone that had the mini usually has to rock some sort of power bank, the Apple MagSafe battery pack, for example. This year around for the mini, you shouldn't have to do that. And I also saw that this is the last year that Apple is making the mini. I think I saw that somewhere over on Twitter. I'll confirm that uh, kind of on screen. If that is the case and you kind of love small devices, this might be your last year to buy the mini. Obviously you can buy it say next year, the year after, but they won't come out with an updated model. So that is super dope. I'm a real fan of the mini. I know it has a really cool cult following. People love smaller devices. The number one reason why I just could never use it was because of that battery. So if we look around the rest of the device, there are a couple differences that you'll spot. So first off, it's the camera sensors. So we now have an updated 12 megapixel system. This being the standard 13, we've just got the standard wide and ultra wide, but you can see how much larger the camera sensors have become. And that's why we actually have that diagonal pattern on the camera as opposed to last year when we just had the two stacked on top of each other. In my initial photos that I've taken in the past day, they've been great. You really notice that difference on the ultra wide camera and on the front, you can already see the notch has decreased in size. 
I wouldn't say that's as big of an upgrade and Apple doesn't really utilize that extra space, but it's nice to see they're reducing the notch size. In terms of that, the display remains pretty much identical. It's still 5.4 inches, but it is brighter. You can get all the way up to 800 nits of brightness this year. Because this is the 13 line, you are still limited to 60 Hertz. And if you want that 120, you do need to spend that extra cash for the iPhone 13 Pro line, unfortunately. Pricing wise, you're looking at 699 bucks US or $950 if you're here in Canada. I know that our dollar does suck, but with that you get 128 gigs of storage. If you are eyeing this, I think you can get by with the base level storage. I think that's totally fine. Internally, we are rocking the A15 Bionic, and as I've used this now for the past day, have I noticed a big speed increase from the 12 line? Honestly, to be very, very honest, I haven't. I know that Geekbench numbers will tell you different. I will leave them here. I know that Apple will say performance is 20, 30% better. In regular day-to-day -day use, you won't really notice that unless you really have both devices side by side. It's hard to tell the difference from last year's 12 line. The new feature though that does rely on that extra power of that chipset is cinematic mode. So that's when you're shooting video, you get that creamy bokeh depth of field that you can always change after the fact. I'm still doing my full test on the cameras. So let me know what else you wanna see shot, maybe some examples if you wanna see. I can do that over this weekend. I will of course update you guys with all of my findings. And in the end, is the new Mini worth it? Well, unless you really love the product red colorway, maybe you might have to upgrade to it. If you already have the 12 Mini, I don't think you need to make that upgrade, but if you have, say, an older device like the iPhone SE, another great small device, and are now eyeing a Mini, definitely choose the 13 Mini. That extra battery life is a no-brainer. If you've got the extra money, the 13 Pro for me is still the winner. Having that 120 Hertz display, it's just so much nicer. It feels so much more fluid. Is that worth or is that justified for that price? I think only you can answer that. But I do think the Mini is still a very solid option. I know a lot of you love it. And of course, hopefully this is your first look at the product red. And of course you can get this across the entire 13 line. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this vid and the very first thing that you should do when you get the mini, even though you did grab the product red, still grab a skin slash case, still protect your device. I think I've shared this across my other videos. My 12 Pro literally cracked a week before the 13s came out, so you don't wanna do this to your nice device. Dbrain has you hooked up with a ton of skins. They can even skin your device red if you want. Anyways, that is the end of my rambling. Let me know what you guys think of Product Red. Did Apple nail it this time around? I personally think they did. And if you guys wanna stay up to date with the rest of my Apple coverage, we just checked out the iPad mini, my personal favorite, as well as the ninth gen new iPad and all other iPhones. It's Apple season, guys. We'll catch the rest of you in one of my next vids. Peace.